What's going on guys, it's Emo Panda, and today I'm bringing you some Xbox One Battlefield 4 gameplay. I had an opportunity to go to a friend's house, and uh, I brought my laptop, recorded some gameplay, and so today I'm going to be telling you how I feel about the Xbox One, how I feel about Battlefield 4 on the Xbox One, and whether or not I think it's worth the $500 price tag. So we'll go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, first, for those who care, uh, the Xbox One is a black console, duh. So for those who care what their entertainment center looks like, you know, they want all their uh, equipment to match this, this, and that. Um, I'm the kind of person, I, I don't care if it matches or not. It, the Xbox One could be pink and I'd probably still buy it. So, for those who care, it looks very nice. It's classy. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than your Xbox 360, but, um, yeah, it looks great. Uh, the controllers, um, the controller feels good in the hand. It's uh, ergonomic. The thumbsticks are slightly offset like they are on the 360. Um, it is a black, all black controller. It feels sturdy. I have friends who like to break shit. So for those who care, it is a sturdy control. It doesn't feel flimsy or weak in your hands. The buttons, um, all the buttons feel good. Uh, my biggest complaint about the buttons are the LB and the RB button that sit right above the trigger. And the reason for that is, is they sit pretty flush to the left and right trigger, and they also feel flush with the controller. And it, I don't, I don't get that click, that uh, that feel that I do on the 360 controller, where I really feel like I've pressed in the button. It's kind of a weird feeling, almost like you're halfway pressing it in on the Xbox One. And that, that while it worked, and that there weren't any mechanical problems with it, I just didn't like the way the LB and the RB button felt. Also, one thing that I noticed, uh, the thumbsticks, the circular pad on the thumbstick are smaller than the ones on the 360. Um, I also use a control freak attachment for my 360, and it kind of bums me out that they don't fit on the Xbox One, so if and when I purchase the Xbox One, I'm going to have to purchase new thumbsticks. Um, they're only 10 bucks, so that's not a big deal. So, now we'll dive into uh, Battlefield 4. So this is Battlefield 4 on the Xbox One. Oh man, doesn't it look pretty? Look at that. Smoke, see that sandstorm rolling in? And later on you'll actually see us uh, fighting in the sandstorm and it really, really hinders your ability to see stuff. So that's a good advantage for infantry because this is a larger map and it is vehicle heavy. So playing in the, the more city area uh, in the sandstorm gives the infantry a slight advantage over the vehicles, which is cool. You know, that way vehicles aren't uh, too overpowered in this map, I'd say. Uh, maybe for the first uh, couple minutes of the game. But once the sandstorm rolls in, it makes it a lot easier for infantry to maneuver around and take out and take out the vehicles. This is also a large conquest. Now on the Xbox 360, um, they only have small conquest maps. Um, the reason for that being is the Xbox one has more computing power than the 360, right? I mean, that's something you would expect. Um, we all know when you're playing Operation Locker on the 360, and when the B flag B flag falls, everybody's frame rate goes to crap. You can't move. You can't shoot anything. Well, that's why they don't have large conquest on the 360. Uh, large conquest, they add two to three more flags per map. Um, it's 64 players instead of 24. So try to imagine. Operation Locker, or Operation Metro, with 64 players. You have all that going on, your Xbox One can handle it. Your 360 would take a shit. Just like that. So, the Xbox 360, I've been a huge Microsoft fan. The 360 has done me well. Um, I know a lot of guys in the military have taken it overseas, have gotten sand in it and uh, come out working. You know, and there's also the uh, concern of, you know, the red ring of death. I haven't heard anything about that on the Xbox One yet, so that's good. I've heard uh, a couple minor issues, um, a couple of discrete errors, but after a few updates, I think most of that has actually been resolved. That's good news, and that's one reason why I suggest never buying a console on release day, or even the first couple months of release day, because that's when they're going to figure out all of their bugs, and they they all beta test their consoles. 
but when you have a mass exodus of Xboxes going out, you're going to have problems. And when you have more people on it, you find out more problems than you realize you had, and you know, patch this, patch that. And I think now they've got, got it pretty much most all underhand. Um, as we all know, it's a $500 price tag, and it comes with a Kinect. Now, I didn't really have much opportunity to use the Kinect, nor did I really care to. I'm not a big Kinect person. If I could take the game, the console, without the Kinect and save myself 100 bucks, I'd do it. But it comes with it, and I, I can see the price tag, so at least I'm getting something for my money. Um, as far as Battlefield 4 goes, my complaint with the Kinect is that people will voice chat through their Kinect. And it'll come through your connect across your TV, and it's kind of annoying. I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm sure you can deactivate it. I just, I didn't do it. I didn't bother to look. I was more into playing Battlefield itself. So, uh, you see those little hands that pop up on the left and right screen? I think you will, you'll see them off and on. So pay attention to the left and right screen. You see these little hands that come up. And I'm not sure what those are for. <coughs> what those are for? Uh, I'm sure it's connect related. Maybe you can. Um, lean left and right, and then your character in Battlefield will lean left or right. Another cool feature of the Kinect is uh, instead of having to hold, for example, your right bumper and you get your little menu that comes up saying, oh, I need a medic. If you just say, I need a medic, then you get the little medic icon over your character's head, which is pretty cool. That saves you some time and not having to pull up a menu, this, this, and that. So, I'm bringing you the second DLC for Battlefield, and it's the second Assault DLC. So I'll be bringing you four new maps, Operation Metro, Caspian Border, Firestorm, and Gulf of Oman. Uh, they are not new maps, anybody who played Battlefield 3 will recognize these maps, and you should be able to pick them up almost instantly. They did add a couple of new features, um, a couple of new paths to help uh, balance it out for, uh, I'm assuming it was mostly for the large conquest people. Um, Everyone knows that Metro's a huge choke point, so they added a couple of new paths you can take. And to be honest, like, I, I guess I appreciate the effort, but it really does jack shit for the game. The reason being, whichever team spawns on the side that I just spawned on, the Russian side upstairs, has the advantage. You can throw grenades, RPGs down all these stairs, and the other team has to come up. So, adding those paths, all they did was just add more choke points. I mean, you add one, okay, you add from, so you go from 24 players to 64, and you add, what, one, maybe two more paths? Okay, that'd be great if it was on regular small conquest, but on large conquest, when you've got, you know, 32 players, I mean, all you really did was just add more places to get hit with grenades from. Uh, playing this, uh, it's large, see those little hands, that's what I'm talking about. The Large Conquest works on maps like this one, Gulf of Oman. See, and here's the sandstorm I was talking about, it's pretty cool. Uh, large Conquest works great on a map like this where there's, what, seven flags? That's, that's great. Um, there's enough action to keep you entertained. Um, you can still run around, move, move, you got places to maneuver, you can flank, and that's great. On smaller maps like Operation Metro, and I keep using that as an example just because that's what I'm showcasing here. But even on a map, if you were to take, um, <clears throat> I don't know, let's say even Siege of Shanghai or Land King Dam or Flood Zone, and put, or even Zavad 311, and put 64 players on that, that that's almost too crowded for for my taste. Uh, I would prefer maybe 32 players instead of the full 64, even 48. 48 would be good. You could do 24 on 24 and that would be good. I don't like... Um, I like being able to use tactics and maneuver, move through buildings and not everywhere I go around a corner I'm faced with two or three two or three opponents. And sometimes, yes, that's great, but it gets old quick and it can make for a very aggravating gameplay. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times I was getting aggravated uh, partially because of the sensitivity issues I was having because I'm used to my my control freak on my 360 and the fact that he didn't have all the same attachments for all the weapons that I like to use uh, made it very difficult for me to get good game get get good excuse me get good gameplay for you guys so um, the gameplay that I did chose was mostly uh, just 
so you can get a feel for the map, look at it, see how the graphics look. Um, I didn't go on any crazy gun streaks or anything like that, but I just really wanted you guys to see the maps, and so I'll be getting in helicopters here and there just so you can kind of see what the overview looks like. And see, and this is the sandstorm inside the uh, inside the, the city on Gulf of Oman. It's pretty cool. I like it. And I've also noticed the uh, suppression effect from Battlefield is more present in the Xbox One version. In the 360 version, I notice when I'm getting suppressed, um, my bullets go everywhere, right? But on the Xbox One, I get that... My character gets that tunnel vision on top of my bullets going everywhere. And, I, I, and that was kind of weird to me. I don't know why they... They changed it up like that from the Xbox One to the 360. Maybe it has something to do with the uh, how demanding the game is, the graphics are, and the Xbox 360 not being able to handle it. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you could ask the devs, but it doesn't really matter. You know, I know a lot of people complained and didn't like the suppression effect uh, from Battlefield 3. Um, it didn't really bother me all that much, unless I was. Uh, trying to snipe somebody, which made it almost impossible. If you look at those fire effects, that's another uh, Levolution effect on Firestorm. There's all these uh, pools of gasoline that you can set on fire. And if you run through them, it damages you. I'm not sure if it uh, will damage a vehicle. I don't see why it wouldn't, but so that's pretty cool. And it looks good. And it creates a smoke screen. See, I'm trying to hit these people, and I've got them spotted, so I'm essentially just shooting at Doritos. But to actually see the, the target itself is pretty difficult. So, not only does it add a degree of uh, danger in the game, but it also adds some concealment, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's also uh, little fire tubes that I'm assuming are... Have, see right there, like gasoline's running through that tube. And now there's a hole in it, and so now it's spurting fire. I'm not sure how that happened. But that's kind of cool. Like, all these little effects. And it looks even cooler from the sky. You see all the smoke, it looks like... You know, someone set a bunch of oil fields on fire, but essentially that's what this is. It's an oil gasoline refinery. So, all in all, um, my thoughts. Is it worth the $500 price tag? And for me, I would say yes. And the reason why I say yes is consoles typically have, let's see what, the Xbox 360 had, what, like a 10-year life cycle? And every console before that, I want to say it was, it was about every four, five years, maybe six, a new console would come out. In this last go-around, it's been ten years. So now we finally got the PS4 and the Xbox One. So, for me, it's worth it. Considering that this console will probably last me another ten years, and that's how often do I play a lot. So if I broke that down, you know, price dollar per, per month, I mean, it's pretty minuscule, considering you know, how, how often you play it. If you only play it once, is it worth $500? No, absolutely not. Um, would I recommend this over the PS4? And once again, that's all preference. A lot of people argue that the PS4 is better because it concentrates on the ga games only. And my thing is, you know, I like options. I like variety. If I want to watch Netflix or whatever, or I want to watch YouTube on my Xbox, then so be it. I mean, the more something does, right, the more it's worth, in my opinion. It plays its games just fine, just like the PS4. It just adds more more, more to what, more for your money. It's more for your money. So ultimately, for me, yes, I think it's absolutely worth it. Um, for you, maybe, maybe not, you know. Um, I'm still playing on my 360, uh, maybe with some tax returns. Money! Maybe I'll pick one up. But this game plays just fine on the 360. And uh, most of my friends are still on the 360, so I'm not in a huge, huge hurry to uh, switch over, but I think within the next six months, I'll probably be picking up an Xbox One. So, that pretty much wraps up my review for the Xbox One and Battlefield 4 on the Xbox One. And um, we can just kind of... I guess I still got time. I got lots of time. Holy crap. Alright, so we'll just talk about the gameplay. So, you get four new weapons with the DLC for uh, Second Assault, which we'll be getting here tomorrow, on the 18th of February. And with that, you get the four new maps. You get four new weapons. You get the M60, which I'm using here, and I love the pig. 
you know, it's not that great, but it's just, it's fun. Well, it's choppy, it's fun. I like it. I was a huge fan in Battlefield 3. Um, you also get the F2000, the, which is an assault rifle, more for a uh, close quarter assault rifle. You get the Asval, which is a submachine gun, or a PDW, I guess in this game they call it. It's a PDW uh, that's always suppressed, and it actually does the most damage per second out of every weapon in the game. Now that also comes with the price, it only has a 20 round magazine, so you're going to find yourself reloading off. Thankfully it's got a decent reload time. And then also for the fourth one, uh, I believe you get the, the Dow 12 shotgun, which for those who don't remember, is a drum fed shotgun, and I believe it holds uh, 12, 12 or 13 rounds, I don't, I don't remember the exact amount. And then you also get the the gold sniper rifle, which I guess is from Bad Company 2. I don't know, I've never played Bad Company 2, but I, I'm assuming that's uh, that's where it's from, that's what I've read. And uh, so like, some people, some uh, people who like the nostalgia will probably like that weapon. Um, I'll probably stick with the SRR-61, but who knows, we'll see. Um, so that's really, uh, that's really about all I have to say. Um, so I'll just go ahead and uh, shut the fuck up, and just go ahead and let you guys enjoy the rest of the video, and uh, hope to see you out there on Second Assault, and hopefully see you on the Xbox One. Have a good night, guys.